Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, the subject of the lesson, of the day lesson, is the electrochemistry. Well, uh, electrochemistry is uh, a particular way of uh, performing redox reaction. Uh, actually, we have that in a redox reaction, we have that the chemical element, the chemical species that oxidizes loses some electron. And these electrons are accepted by the chemical species that reduces. Usually in a usual redox reaction, the electron goes directly from the element that oxidizes to the element that reduces. And the redox reaction is accomplished in this way. As an example, here we report on the blackboard an example of this redox reaction. It's a very simple redox reaction in which a zinc plate is dipped, is immersed into a solution of copper ion. The reaction that occurs is that zinc is oxidized to ion zinc Zn2 plus 2 and loses two electrons. And these two electrons, as accepted by the copper ion plus 2, that reduces to metallic copper. And if we put a zinc plate into this uh, a solution of copper ion, uh, we see the, how the reaction proceeds, because uh, zinc appears uh, rather as the aspect of silver, something like this. When uh, the zinc plate is dipped into the copper ion solution, copper ion begins to deposit on the zinc plate as atoms of copper, but atoms of copper have a different color. The color of copper is something between pink and yellow. So we see that the piece of the zinc plate that this is not immersed keeps its own color, it keeps its own silver-like color. Whereas the part of the zinc plate that is dipped into the solution assumes the color of copper. So we can see uh, directly the, this reaction to go on. And this is a normal, a usual redox reaction in which the directly the electron lost by zinc are accepted by copper ion and zinc turns into zinc ion and copper ion turns into metallic copper. But there is the possibility of uh, creating a system in which the electron that are lost by the species that oxidizes does not go directly to the species that reduces. But this passage of electron does not occur directly, but occurs through a metallic wire, through a, an electric circuit. This is the way in which a redox reaction becomes an electrochemical reaction. Namely, if one asks you, what is an electrochemical reaction? Electrochemical reaction is a reaction in which, and a redox reaction in which the location in which the oxidation half reaction is separated from the location in which the reduction half reaction occur. The two half reaction the physical, uh, the physical location in which these two half reactions occur are separated. And so the passage of electrons from the species that oxidizes to the species that reduces does not occur directly from the species that oxidizes to the species that reduces, but occurs through the passage of electrons in a metallic wire in an electric circuit. So, uh, 
organizing this, arranging this kind of system, you have two possibilities. And both of these possibilities are very interesting. The first possibility is, wait for a moment, using a spontaneously occurring redox reaction to produce an electric current. This is a pile. Namely, there is an redox reaction which occurs spontaneously. If the passage of the electron is obliged to go through an electric circuit, an ordinate passage of electron in a metallic wire represents an electric current. And so this electric current may be exploited to perform some task, as an example, to light a lamp, to uh, make your mobile work, to let the engine of your car to start, something like this. Another possibility, also this one very, very interesting, may be achieved by performing an electrochemical and redox reaction in an electrochemical way. And this is using an electric machine that is called the tension generator to drive the electrical charge, namely the electrons, in the opposite direction in which they would flow spontaneously. In this case, it is possible to make occur a reaction that spontaneously would never occur. And this is an electrolysis. Why electrolysis is very, very important? First of all, some of you has listened that electrolysis of water is quite an easy task. And it allows to uh, to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen that, uh, that form water into molecular hydrogen and into molecular oxygen. Well, this is a task that may be uh, performed, may be achieved very, very easily in an electrochemical way, whereas in older way it is not possible at all. So, if we one want to separate hydrogen and oxygen that compose that form of water into the elements that it form, that by which it is formed, namely molecular hydrogen and molecular oxygen, in an electrochemical way, it is very, very easy. In other way, it is not practically possible. But there are also other possibilities deriving from electro electrolysis. As an example, every one of you has a mobile. The mobile is, uh, is fed by a pile. And the pile, while it works, is an electrochemical device which exploit a spontaneously occurring redox reaction to create an electrical current, and this electrical current allows your mobile to work. And so you do all the things that you do with your mobile. You phone, you make a research on the internet, you chat with your friend, and so on. But uh, the, uh, the battery of your mobile needs to be charged again, because unless you charge it, the battery of your mobile will be off, and your mobile will be off, will be not able to work anymore. And to charge again the battery of your mobile, what do you usually do? You, you, you take the device by which the battery of your mobile are charged again. You put the plug of this device in an electrical socket and it takes an electrical current from the electrical net. This electrical current will make to occur an electrolysis into the battery, into the device that feed 
your mobile. And during the charge of this battery, the reaction that by which that occurred when your mobile was fed by the battery occur in the opposite direction. So the possibility of releasing an electrical current by the mobile, by the battery, is again renewed. So your mobile works because the pile gives to your mobile the electrical energy, the electrical current to make it work. And this is a pile. But the possibility of charging again the battery of your mobile depends on the fact that the reaction that does performed to produce the electrical current that feed your mobile may be reversed. May, be, may go into the reverse direction and going into the reverse direction by taking the electrical current from the electrical net by the plug into the socket, this reaction will be reversed. And by reversing this reaction, the ability of the pile of releasing electrical current will be renewed again, okay? So, let's see how it is possible to transform a usual, a normal redox reaction into an electrochemical reaction. Look at this. Let's take the same very simple chemical reaction that we have just seen, namely the oxidation of metallic zinc by copper ion, which turns, into, which turns into metallic copper by oxidizing metallic zinc to zinc ion. This is the redox reaction, and this is the way in which this redox reaction is just a simple redox reaction, because in this way of operating, the electron goes directly from the zinc atoms to the copper ion, and the zinc atoms turns into zinc ions, and the copper ions turns into metallic copper. Let's see how this very simple reaction may become an electrochemical reaction. So if we operate in this way, this is just a simple redox reaction. To transform this simple redox reaction into an electrochemical reaction, we have to build this kind of system that now I'm going to show you. Wait for a moment. Look at this. We have here two vessels, two glass vessels. It may be a glass, something like this. In this glass, there is a solution of zinc ion. As an example, the solution of zinc ions may be obtained by dissolving a zinc salt, such as nitrate of zinc, ZN, uh, NO3 taken two times, this salt. And in this, in this, in this solution is dipped a uh, zinc plate. Then we have another glass, another vessel, in which we put a copper ion solution obtained by dissolving another salt of copper, such as copper nitrate. And in this other vessel, a um, plate of copper is dipped into this solution. Then this, uh, the zinc plate is connected through an electrical wire to the copper plate. And along this electrical wire, we put an, a lamp. You know, this is, in this drawing is represented an old lamp that worked 
by passing the current through a wire of Wolframium that become very, very hot. And becoming very, very hot, it emitted a lot of light. It was the old lamp that now are not sold anymore because they produced more heat than light. But it is a, a very uh, a device that uh, explains very well what it occurs. When you close the circuit, the lamps turn on. And it is the proof that electrons are going through this system. What, what is occurring in this system? Well, in this part of this system, we have that this alpha reaction occurs, namely metallic zinc loses two electron and turns into zinc ion that goes into the solution. These two electrons go upward in this direction, they turn in the clockwise direction, and they are made available on the copper plate. This copper plate becomes electrically charged negatively and attracts the copper ion. And so copper ion reacts with these two electrons, thus transforming into co metallic copper, which is deposited over the surface of the copper plate. Okay? Now I'm going to explain what is this part of this system. This is a, a, a pipe, a glass pipe, which has the shape of a U. Look, a U, the U letter of the alphabet. And this U-shaped pipe is filled with a concentrated solution of potassium chloride. Well, this U pipe, the, uh, the hand of this uh, pipe, are blocked by uh, cotton wool balls. The reason by which you must put these cotton wool balls is that when you turn upside down this U, U shaped pipe, unless you put these cotton wool balls, this, uh, uh, this solution would pour out of this, out of this pipe. N not to allow the pipe to be empty, you put these two cotton balls. Then you dip one hand of the U pipe in this solution of zinc ion, and the other end of the U, the U pipe in the solution of copper ion. And uh, this is uh, this device that it is called the bridge, the salt bridge, the salt bridge. It uh, is needed to close the circuit that now we have created. Unless there is this device, this pile could release electrical current by a very, very, very short time. Why? Because as soon as this reaction goes on, we have that an accumulation of a positive electrical care charge is created in this solution because it loses electron and zinc ion goes into the solution. So here the positive charge increases. Here we have that electron goes this way, this way, this way, this way. They become available on the surface of the copper plate here. They react with the copper ion so here, copper ion disappear from the solution. Copper ion are positive. So here, 
and an excess of negative electrical charge is created. To keep on going on, on working the pile, so other electron should go from this side, which is positively charged, to this other side that is negatively charged. And we know that negative charge goes from negative side to positive side and not the contrary. So we have to depolarize this accumulation of positive electrical charge here and negative electrical charge here. And this is the task of this salt bridge because we have that when this solution begins to be positively charged, a chloride ion that are kept into this solution gets out from this U-shaped tube and uh, eliminate the axis of positive charge that is created in this vessel. The contrary occurs on the other side. In this other side, we have a, a negative exchange charge. So the potassium ion that are positively charged, that are present in this solution, are attracted in this solution and make the excess of negative charge to disappear. So the function of this salt bridge is to depolarize the system. You know, uh, as I electrolyte, potassium chloride was chosen is the most is the most proper because both potassium ion and chloride ion bring with themselves plus one and minus one charge. So they bring with themselves the same charge. Then the mobility of these two ions is about the same because the mobility of an ion under the action of an electrical field depends on, depends on the atomic mass of the atom itself, of the ion itself. So potassium has a 39, chlorine has a 35.5, so the, the mass of these two atoms are very close to each other. So both the cation and the anion has the same charge, has the same mass, and so we have about the same ability to bring positive charge and electrical and negative charge. Nevertheless, if you use another electrolyte, you all the way will obtain the depolarization of this pile, but the depolarization will not be so perfect as in the case you use a salt such as potassium chloride, in which both the anion and the cation represents the same uh, ability to bring electrical charge. Then, finally, it should also be said that this part of the pile is said anode, and at the anode, the oxidation react of reaction occurs. Whereas this part of the pile is called cathode, and in, at the cathode, the reduction of reaction occurs. You know, these two words, anode and cathode, are two words that are of old Greek derivation. Actually, anode means ana ode. Ana means upward, ode rude. So, ana anode means rude upward. And rude upward means that the electron goes out from the anode and go in the upward direction. Whereas cathode comes from the old Greek kata, which means downward, or the road. And in, at the cathode, we have that the electron goes from upward to downward, and so they are made available on the surface of the copper plate 
to let the reduction of reaction to undergo, okay, to be accomplished. And so we have that we have separated the physical location in which the, react, the oxidation of reaction occur, and this is the anode, from the physical location where the reduction of reaction occur, and this is the cathode, okay? So, the electron that went in this way of operating the reaction went directly from zinc to copper ion. Now, this electron to go from zinc to copper ion have to go through this metallic, this electrical circuit. They go through the electric lamp, they light the electric lamp, and you can use this electrical current to accomplish a particular task that in this case is to light a lamp, okay? Now we have seen how it is possible to separate the physical location where the oxidation of reaction occurs, namely the anode, from the location, from the physical location where the reduction of reaction occurs, namely the cathode. Now let's see, let's, let's gain further insight in su, into this chemical branch that is said electrochemistry. If we substitute the lamp with this divide, which is called voltmeter, the voltmeter is a device that is able to measure the difference of electrical potential between these two points, A and B, of the electrical circuit, okay? So, the difference of potential that is read by this voltmeter is a measure of, the, of how easy is this the reaction. If the difference of potential will be higher, it will mean that this reaction occurs in an easier way. If this uh, difference of potential is lower, it means that uh, the reaction will occur in a less easy way, okay? Well, um, we have that at the anode, the oxidation reaction of zinc occurs, and this is the oxidation of reaction of zinc. At the cathode, the reduction of reaction of copper ion occurs. If we sum member to member these two half reaction, we obtain the overall reaction, which is zinc plus copper ion plus two electron, gives us zinc ion, metallic copper, and two electron. Two electron and two electron are eliminated from both sides of this chemical reaction, and we obtain just the reaction that we had by performing the redox reaction in a not electrochemical way, okay? So we obtained the same reaction, but we separated the physical location where oxidation and reduction of reaction had occurred. Well, I told you that this difference of potential is a measure of how easy is an redox reaction, and in this case also an electrochemical reaction. Well, let's see the, the, the parameter that affect this difference of potential. And the parameters that affect 
this difference of potential are the following. The nature of the reacting system, namely, what is the chemical reaction that is occurring? The concentration of the reaction of the, of the various reagents that are in solution, the temperature, and the partial pressure of possible gaseous reagent. Well, in the reaction that we have studied, namely the oxidation of zinc by copper ion, there aren't gaseous reactants, but we will see in order reaction that there are also gaseous reactants. So if this is the case, if there are gaseous reactants, the partial pressures of the gaseous reactants affect the difference of potentials that is released by this pile. So let us focus our attention on the nature of the reacting system. So let's try to understand in which way the reacting system uh, affect the difference of potential released by a pile, by an electrochemical device. To fulfill this goal, we define standard uh, condition and we perform all the following experiment by considering standard concentration, standard temperature, standard partial pressure. The standard condition for an electrochemical system are defined as the concentration of, both, of all the ions that are present in solution is one molar. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, namely 298.16 degree Kelvin. And the partial pressure of the gaseous reactant is set equal to one atmosphere. So let's uh, consider that this reaction, namely the oxidation of zinc by copper ion is performed under standard condition. So let's consider that the concentration of zinc ion in solution here at the anode is one molar. The concentration of copper ion in solution at the cathode is one molar. The temperature at which this experiment is performed is 25 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 298.16 degree Kelvin. In this condition, we have that the difference of potential released by this electrochemical system, by this pile, will be equal to 1.10 volt. Okay? Once we have seen that the difference of potential released by this pile is 1.10 volt, we would like to know how much of this difference of potential may be ascribed to the half reaction of oxidation of zinc and how much of this difference of potential may be ascribed to the reaction to the reaction of uh, to the reduction to the reduction reaction of copper ion well in a first moment, it is not possible to give uh, uh, an answer to this question. Why it is not possible? Because we cannot evaluate the contribution of the oxidation reaction of metallic zinc, because together with the oxidation of reaction, a reduction of reaction must occur. So when zinc oxidizes, 
Copenhagen reduces. So this is the reason why we cannot distinguish the contribution of the oxidation reaction of zinc, or metallic zinc, from the contribution of the react reduction reaction that copper ion undergo. So this is not possible at all. But man has another possibility to detect, to ascertain, to distinguish the contribution of the anodic oxidation of reaction from the contribution of the cathodic reduction of reaction to the difference of potential released by the pile. And what man can do is just what I'm going to tell you. To circumvent this problem, the standard hydrogen high electrode indicated by the acronym SHE is set up. How it is built, this is standard hydrogen, uh, standard hydrogen electrode, is formed by a piece of spongy platinum, dipped almost completely, but not completely, into an aqueous solution of hydroxonium ion. And the concentration of hydroxonium ion is set equal to one molar. Then the part of the spongy platinum bar that is dipped into the solution of hydroxonium ion that gets outside is in contact with a portion of atmosphere in which a partial pressure of hydrogen of one atmosphere is created. And this portion of atmosphere is blocked by a glass bell that is dipped into the solution. Then the partial pressure of one atmosphere of hydrogen is created here by a pipe from which hydro gaseous hydrogen is bubbled through the solution up to the portion of atmosphere blocked by the bell. So I am going to repeat the feature of this standard hydrogen electron. A spongy platinum piece. Why spongy? Because as it is a spongy, the specific surface of this high electrode will be higher. And so the production of electron will be higher because the, this reaction occurs over the surface of this spongy electron bar is dipped into a hydroxonium ion of concentration one molar, and the spongy bar of platinum is also in contact with a portion of atmosphere blocked by a glass bell, and in this portion of atmosphere, a partial pressure of hydrogen of one atmosphere is created by bubbling gaseous hydrogen through a pipe. Okay? Understood? Then, we built, we built this pile. In this pile, The anode of this pile is formed by a bar of zinc that is dipped into a solution of zinc ion. And uh, the anode of this pile is the standard hydrogen electron. Obviously, also 
the zinc the anode in the standard condition, namely the concentration of zinc ion is one molar. If we close this electrical circuit and, uh, and then we put a U-shaped glass pipe in which a concentrated uh, potassium chloride solution is put, we close this electrical circuit and we see that at the anode the oxidation reaction of zinc occurs, namely zinc that loses two electron and turns into zinc ion. These two electrons goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, and then go down, go down, go down, go down. They are made available over the surface of the spongy platinum piece dipped into the hydroxonium ion solution. And over the surface of this spongy platinum piece, the reaction or reduction of hydroxonium ion to hydrogen gas will occur. And the hydrogen gas is collected into this piece of atmosphere blocked by the bell. Okay? So, if we operate in standard condition, we will have that the voltmeter set in this position we are read the difference of potassium occurring between these two points of the electrical circuit. It will read a difference of potential of 0 0.76 volt. Okay? Now, what has the possibility, the man has the possibility to do? This is typical of this pile in which the anode is represented by the zinc electrode and the cathode is represented by the standard hydrogen electrode. The man has the possibility to say that the contribution of the standard hydrogen electrode to this pile is zero. So all these 0 0.76 volt are ascribed to the oxidation of reaction of zinc when it is occurring in standard condition. Well, in the reality, this is not true. But we can assume it. No one denies us this possibility. No one disallows us to make this position. Okay? So, if we consider that the contribution of the standard elect hydrogen electrode to this pile is zero, we can attribute all these 0 0.76 volt that releases this pile to the oxidation of reaction of zinc when performed under standard condition. Okay? Then, let's build another pile. This other pile is made this way. The cathode of this pile is formed by the copper electrode, namely by a uh, plate of copper dipped into a copper ion solution in standard condition, namely the concentration of copper ion is one molar. And the anode of this pile is a standard electro hydrogen electrode. In this pile we see that <coughs> at the anode the Hydrogen that is kept in this empty space that is above the spongy place of platinum will react, will lose electron, and will turn into hydroxonium ion, which goes into the solution. 
this electron that does produced by this reaction go up, go up, go up, go up. This is the anode, namely the reaction go upward. They go through the voltmeter and they go down, go down, go down, go down, up to the copper plate where the reduction of reaction occur, okay? Then we put always the U-shaped glass tube in which U-shaped glass pipe in which potassium chloride solution is set to depolarize the pile while it is working. And we have that under standard condition, we have that the difference of potential that this voltmeter read at between these two points of the electrical circuit is exactly 0 0.34. Be very careful to the fact that the zero apex that is reported here, zero, zero, so this is delta E zero, the zero means that we are in the standard condition. Okay, so when there is a zero in writing, in reading these formulas, it means that we are operated under standard condition, okay? So, the, <coughs> the difference of potential read by the voltmeter between these two points of the electrical circuit will be 0 0.34. As we did in the previous case, we consider that the contribution of the standard hydrogen electrode to this pile is zero. So we have the possibility of ascribing all this 0.35 volt of difference of potential to the reduction of copper ion half reaction, okay? I repeat, in reality, this is not true. This difference of potential is a particular feature of this pile. But no one deny us, deny to man the possibility of saying that the contribution of the standard electrode hydrogen to this pile is zero. And in this case, and only in this case, we have that all this difference of potential may be ascribed to the cathodic cough reaction reduction of reduction of the copper ion. Okay, understood, go on. If we sum member to member these two half reaction, we obtain, we will obtain this reaction, H2 gaseous plus Cu plus two ion plus two electron will give two hydroxonium ion aqueous metallic copper plus two electron. Two electron and two electron are eliminated because they appear both on the left and on the side of this reaction. And this, is, this will be the overall reaction that occur in this system. So, in this way, we had the possibility of uh, distinguish the contribution of the anodic half reaction oxidation of zinc from the contribution of the cathodic half reaction of reduction of copper ion. Now, wait for a moment. Dunque. Uh, so, sorry. We said that 0.6 volt 
will be totally attributed to the half reaction of, reduct, of oxidation of zinc. 0 0.3534 volt will be totally attributed to the reduction of copper ion half reaction in standard condition. If we sum these two contribution to these two piles, we obtain 0 0.76 plus 0 0.34 and the total will be 1.10 volts. If we see, wait for a moment, We have that the difference of potential released by this pile under standard condition is exactly 1.10. Namely, by simply preferring the two half reaction that occur in this pile to the standard hydrogen electron, and by considering that the contribution of the standard hydrogen electrode to these two piles is zero, we have the possibility of distinguishing the contribution of the oxidation of zinc, which is 0 0.76 under standard condition, from the contribution of copper, which in standard condition is 0 0.34. So we attained a goal that appeared completely impossible. <coughs> you know, we had to use the standard hydrogen electron. And to fulfill this goal, it was not possible to think about the pile in which the anode was zinc and the cathode was copper, because the oxidation reaction could not occur without a reduction reaction. And as well as a reduction, a, a chemical reduction half reaction could not occur if somewhere else a chemical oxidation half reaction should occur. So we had to use the trick, the escamotage of referring to a third reaction to which the contribution is said is said to be equal to zero to distinguish the contribution of the oxidation of reaction of zinc from the contribution of reduction half reaction of copper ion. Okay. Well, now we determine the contribution to a pile of the oxidation reaction of zinc by connecting this anode to the standard hydrogen electron. Then we evaluated the contribution of the copper cathode to uh, the pile by connecting it to the standard hydrogen electron. This operation, which was done for these two half reactions, can be done for whatever half reaction, both of oxidation and our reduction. As an example, we can take an we can take the reaction of oxidation of iron to iron ion plus 2. And if we want to know the contribution of this half reaction under standard condition to a pile, 
we have to connect it to the standard hydrogen electron. So if we build this kind of system in which an iron plate is dipped into a solution of iron plus two plate whose concentration is one molar and this uh, iron plate is electrically connected to a, a standard hydrogen electrode and then the electrical circuit is closed by using a new shaped pipe in which a concentrated potassium chloride solution is set, we have this pile. And we see in this pile that at this side of the pile, the oxidation reaction of iron will occur and iron will oxidize to iron cation plus two, just releasing two electrons. These two electrons goes upward, this is the anode, upward, 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 they then go downward to the cathode, and when they are made available over the surprise of the spongy platinum bar dipped into the hydroxonium solution, it, this interaction will be made available for undergoing this reduction reaction. Two hydroxonium ion, which reacts with two electron to give rise to gaseous hydrogen, okay? If we perform this experiment under standard concision, we will have that the difference of potential that is read by the voltmeter between these two points, A and B, of this circuit will be exactly 0 0.45 volt. Okay? Now we can repeat the operation that now we have done for the zinc anode. The operation we have done with the copper cathode. The operation we have done for the iron anode of connecting this half cell <coughs> part to the standard hydrogen electron. We can perform this same operation for all the chemical system in which a redox reaction may occur. And uh, by reading, by operating this pile in standard condition, and by reading the difference of potential that is occurring between these two points of the electrical system, we will be able to distinguish, to evaluate the contribution of every half reaction, both of oxidation or end reduction to this pile, and by considering that the contribution of the standard hydrogen electron is zero, this will be the contribution that this half reaction will be to whatever pile. And by performing this operation for whatever oxidation of reaction, half reaction, we can build a table in which we report all these difference of potential. This, this uh, table will be called the electrochemical series. Well, for the sake of homogeneity, all the reactions reported in the electrochemical series should be reported as um, reduction reaction or oxidation reaction. It was chosen to report it as a reduction reaction. But we have seen that in many cases, oxidation must occur. So to understand that the spontaneous reaction is not the reduction in some cases, whereas it is the oxidation, 
in this case, the potential released by the pile in standard condition is reported with the minus sign. And so we obtain this electrochemical series. You know, this is a piece of this table, and we report that the contribution of the copper cathode to uh, a pile in which the other electrode is a standard hydrogen electron is plus 0.35 volt. Then the contribution of the reduction of iron plus 2 ion to a pile in which it is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode is reported to be minus 0.44 volt. What does it mean with this minus sign? This minus sign means that the spontaneous reaction is not the reduction, whereas it is the oxidation, okay? The same thing can be said for zinc ion. When we connect the zinc, in, uh, the zinc bar immersed in a solution of zinc ion to the standard electron hydrogen, we have that this contribution, the reduction of this zinc ion, is reported to be minus 0.76 volt. It means that this is not the spontaneous reaction. This means that this minus sign, that the spontaneous reaction is the reverse reaction. And it means that metallic zinc spontaneously transforms into zinc ion when connected to the standard hydrogen electrode, okay? So when we obtain these electrochemical series, we have that, uh, uh, that uh, a chemical species that is located in a particular position in this table will be able to reduce all the chemical species that are located in a position above it and to oxidize it, all the chemical species that are located beneath it. As an example, iron reduces the Cu plus 2 ion to metallic copper and it turns into iron ion Fe plus 2 but uh, iron oxidizes metallic zinc to zinc ion, uh, transforming into Fe, uh, uh, Fe, Fe iron plus two ions. And moreover, this table allows to detect the spontaneous evolution of electrochemical system and also to calculate the delta E0, namely the difference of potential released by this pile. You know, the difference of potential released by a pile is also called electrodriving force. Why it is called electrodriving force? It is called electrodriving force because it is the force that drives electrical change through the electrical circuit. And it is a feature of the pile itself, because of the pile itself creates its electrodriving force. Let's make some example. Look at this. We have a pile in which we have an electrode of zinc, a plate of zinc 
dipped into a solution of zinc ion and the concentration of the zinc ion is one molar, namely we are in standard condition, namely temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, namely 298 degrees Kelvin, 0.16 Kelvin degrees. Then we have a uh, FA plate, metallic F iron plate dipped into a FA plus 2 solution ion and the concentration of the iron ion is always one molar. When these two plates are electrically collected by a metallic wire and a voltmeter is set here and the electrical circuit is closed by uh, dipping the hand of this U-shaped glass tube in which um, a potassium chloride solution is set inside, we have that on this side, on the left side of this pile, the oxidation of zinc to zinc ion occurs. Two electrons are produced. This electron goes upward, obviously this is the anode, and this electron goes through the whole electrical circuit. They go down up to the half a plate dipped into the F a F plus two ion solution and these electrons are made available for the reduction for the iron plus two ion reduction to occur and the iron metallic iron is formed and is deposited over the surface of the cathode well in standard condition we have that we can calculate the electro driving force in standard condition and it is quite easy because according to the electrochemical series the contribution that the oxidation of zinc with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode is 0 plus 0 0.76. Then we have that the contribution of reduction of iron ion to metallic iron is minus 0 0.45. So if these two half reactions are summed by member by member, we obtain this reaction. A metallic ZN plus Fe plus two ion plus two electron, which gives us zinc plus two ions plus two electron plus metallic iron, two electron and two electron are eliminated, so the overall reaction that occurs in this system is the oxidation of zinc by, by uh, iron cation plus two to metallic iron. As the electrochemical series C says that the contribution of the oxidation of zinc to with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode is plus 0 0.76. And the contribution of the, of the, react, of the reduction reaction of Fe plus 2 ion is minus 0 0.44 volt. We sum this to amount 0 0.44. 76 plus minus 0 0.44 and we obtain that the electro driving force of this pile in standard condition will be 0 0.32 okay so 
using the electrochemical series will allow us to understand the spontaneous direction of evolution of the system and also to calculate the electrode driving force under standard concession. By the way, if in performing this operation you will obtain it at the end of this operation an electrodriving force which is negative, it means that uh, this is not the spontaneous reaction that occurs in the system. It will mean that the spontaneous reaction that will occur in the system will be the reverse of the one you have considered. Okay? Let's make another example. <clears throat> Let's build a pile in which we have an iron plate dipped into a half A solution in standard concision, namely the concentration of the FA plus 2 ion is 1 molar. Then on the other side there is a copper plate dipped into a solution of copper ion where the concentration of copper ion is 1 molar. Then we close, we connect electrically these two plates and we close the electrical circuit by using the U-shaped pipe, glass pipe, in which a concentrated solution of potassium chloride is set. We will see that at the anode, the metallic iron will dissolve and will pass into solution under the form of the Fa plus 2 ion, and two electrons will be released, which go up, go up, go up, go up, goes through the voltmeter, thus giving rise to the difference of potential, which is read by the voltmeter between these two points. Then this electron will go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. And uh, this electron will be made available over the surface of the copper plate, where they will be made available for the reaction of reduction of copper ion to occur. Namely, Cu plus 2 ion will react with two electrons, thus turning into a copper ion, which will be deposited over the surface of the copper plate. Okay? So, if we sum member to member these two half reactions, we will obtain the overall reaction that is occurring in the system. And we will have Fa plus Cu plus 2 ion plus 2 electron that gives us Fa plus 2 ion plus 2 electron plus metallic copper. Two electron and two electron are eliminated because they appear both on the side and on the left of this half reaction. And we have that the overall reaction that is occurring in this system is this one. What will be the standard electrodriving force of this pile? Well, it is very easy because the contribution that the half reaction of, react, of reduction of, of, of oxidation of iron is equal to. Uh, 0 0.44. The contribution of, uh, of uh, uh, the reduction of, uh, of um, copper ion will be 0 0.43. By summing these two amount, one, uh, 0 0.44 plus 0 0.34, 
will obtain 0 0.78, which will be the electro driving force of this pile under standard condition. This result was attained by just performing a simple sum, a simple algebraic sum of the difference of potential released by these two alpha reaction. And the difference of potential which is recorded at the, between these two points of the electrical circuit will be exactly equal to this value which was theoretically calculated. Okay? So you can do a lot of calculation of this type. You know, the use of the electrochemical series may be very useful because it makes you understand why some reaction occurs and some of the reaction does not occur. Let's make some example. It is well known that the acid corrode the salt iron and bring it into solution under the form of iron plus two iron, whereas acids are not able to bring into solution copper ion, metallic copper under the form of copper ion. Well, in the electrochemical series, we can find the answer that we will find a proper answer to the question why acids are able to corrode iron and are not able to corrode copper. Let's see. When uh, we have that uh, iron corrodes, when uh, acids corrode iron, we put a piece of metallic iron into a solution, a concentrated solution of hydroxonium ion, and we will see that a gas is evolved. We see bubble of a gas that develop over the surface of the piece of the iron, and this gas is hydrogen, and we see that the metallic iron disappear and passes into solution. The reason for which this reaction occurs is that the contribution that uh, the oxidation of iron to iron plus to iron is 0 0.44 and this datum can be taken from the electrochemical series. The contribution that the reduction of hydroxonium ion to, to gaseous hydrogen gives to this reaction is set equal to zero by convention. So the electrodriving force of this pile measured under standard condition will be 0 0.44 plus 0 equal to 0 0.44. The fact that this electrodriving force is positive, it means that this reaction occurs, and it is well known the possibility by acid of corroding, of dissolving the object that are in iron. Okay. If we put a piece of copper into a strongly acidic solution in which there is a high concentration of hydroxonium ion, we will see that this reaction does not occur. We will not see any bubble of hydrogen 
released by this system. And we see that the piece of iron, the piece of copper, remain a piece of copper, does not pass into solution. Why does this reaction does not occur? The reason is that if we go to calculate the electrodriving force of this pile calculated under standard condition, we have that the reduction of, excuse me, the oxidation of copper from metallic copper to copper ion gives a contribution that is equal to minus 0 0.34. Then, the oxidation of hydroxonium ion to, uh, excuse me, the reduction of the hydroxonium ion to gaseous hydrogen will give a contribution equal to zero because we have a set equal to zero the contribution of the standard hydrogen electrode in whatever situation. So, minus 0 0.34 plus 0 is equal to minus 0 0.34. The fact that the electrodriving force of this electrochemical reaction turns negative, it means that this reaction spontaneously does not occur. Actually, the opposite reaction spontaneously occurs. If we see the previous lesson, wait for a moment, I'm going to find the previous lesson. Look at this. Look, we have a system in which a plate of copper is dipped into a solution of copper ion or concentration one molar, and a piece of spongy platinum is dipped into a hydroxonium ion or concentration one molar, and is in contact with a uh, atmosphere in which the partial pressure of hydrogen is one atmosphere, we have that in this pile, the reaction that spontaneous will occur will be the oxidation of hydrogen, gaseous hydrogen, to hydroxonium ion, and the reduction of copper ion to metallic copper. So, this pile tells us that this is the, sp the reaction that spontaneously does not occur. Thus, it means that this reaction is the opposite of the reaction that spontaneously occurs. So this reaction spontaneously does not occur. So we can find the answer in the electrochemical series of why acids are able to corrode iron and why acids are not able to corrode copper. Because in the first case, the electrodriving force that is created into the pile is positive, and so the reaction spontaneously occur. In the second case, the electrodriving force that is created into the pile is negative, which means that the reaction spontaneously does not occur. Okay? Let's see another something also very, very interesting. It is known that alkaline metals such as sodium, such as potassium, such as lithium, are able to reduce the hydrogen of water. If you put a piece of sodium into water, you will see that the piece of sodium dissolves very quickly, that the 
uh, gaseous bubble are evolved. And what it occurs are the following phenomena. Look, metallic sodium turns into sodium ion, which goes into solution, thus releasing electron. This electron will be taken by the hydrogen of water, and the hydrogen of water will pass from number oxidation plus one to number oxidation zero, thus producing gaseous hydrogen, which will be released under the form of a bubble. This reaction occurs because the electrochemical series tells us that the contribution that the oxidation of sodium to sodium ion with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode is plus 2.71 volt. Whereas the contribution of reduction of hydrogen or water with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode is equal to minus 0.83 volt. If you sum member to member this reaction to this reaction and this uh, contribution to this contribution, you have that two atoms of sodium reaction with two molecules of water, thus releasing two electrons, and two ions Na Na plus are formed, plus two electrons, plus two hydroxonium ion, and plus one molecule of hydrogen, and two electrons and two electrons will be eliminated as they appear both on the left and on the right, and by summing these two contribution of these two half reaction to this pile, we, be, we will obtain 2.71 volt plus minus 0.83 volt, and the result is a positive electrodriving force of 1.88 volt, which means that metallic sodium is able to reduce the hydrogen of water. Because the electrodriving force calculated under standard concision is largely positive, 1.88 volt. This is the same reason why if we put a piece of metallic iron into water, metallic iron will not be able to reduce the hydrogen of water. Why? Let's have a look to this. We see that the contribution that the oxidation of iron to Fe plus 2 iron will be if you see it on the electrochemical series, it will be equal to plus 0.44 volt. And the contribution that, that is given by the reduction of hydrogen or water with respect to the standard hydrogen electron will be minus 0.83 volt. If we sum member to member this reaction, we obtain this overall reaction. But if we sum these two contributions, we obtain plus 0 0.44 plus minus 0 0.83, and the result will be minus 0 0.83. 0.39. The fact that this electrodriving force is negative, it means that this reaction spontaneously will not occur. This is the reason why when we put a piece of metallic sodium into water, it will reduce the hydrogen of water just releasing hydrogen under the form of bubble, while this same reaction does not occur 
when a piece of iron is put into a, a concentrated hydroxonium ion. In, 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 sorry, in when the, a piece of iron is set into water. In this case, the reaction will not occur because the contribution that is given by the oxidation of iron will not be sufficient to allow the reduction of hydrogen of water. Okay? Now, before going on, I would like to tell you one more thing. Wait for a moment. <coughs> Well, we saw that in a pile there is an anode and there is a cathode. Anode is the location in which uh, oxidation reaction, half reaction occur. Cathode is the location in which the reduction of reaction occur. We are a little bit in difficulty if we want to say which is the positive and the negative high electrode of a pile. Why? Because the anode is the source of the electron. The electrons are uh, produced by the oxidation reaction. The electron gets out from the, from the anode. So from this point of view, the anode should be the negative electron because it is the source of the electron. Whereas it must also be said that at the anode, zinc are turned from metallic zinc to zinc ion that they pass into solution. As they pass into solution, this solution will become more positive and from this U-shaped pipe, chloride negative ion will get out. And so chloride ions are attracted here. So from this point of view, to attract chloride ion, the zinc electrode should be a positive electrode. Whereas if we think about the copper electrode. The copper electron is the electron sink when the electron go. So from this point of view, the electron which are negatively charged, they must go toward positive charge. So the cathode should be the positive electron. But we have that in this solution, we have that from this solution, copper ion disappear, and to balance this lack of positive electrical charge, we have that potassium cation gets out from this U-shaped pipe and will go to this solution, and but positive ion are attracted by negatively charged electrode. So the cathode should be negative with respect to the electrolytic part of the circuit and should be positive with respect to the metallic part of the circuit. The fact is that when you talk about a pile, it does not a large sense of talking about positive and negative hydrate. It has a sense of talking about anode and cathode. Anode is the location in which uh, oxidation reaction occur, and cathode will be the location where a uh, reduction reaction occur. Okay? Just to give complete information, when you buy a pile, you have the indication this is the positive electron, this is the negative electron. 
Well, in a pile, it is pointed as the negative electron, the anode, namely the source of the electron, and is pointed as positive electron, the cathode, namely the sink of the electron. So the polarity that is given when a bacteria is, is sold is the polarity with respect to the metallic part of the circuit. We still have some minutes, so I'm trying to go ahead a little bit. Well, <clears throat> it must also be said that precise relation relate the intensity of an electric current passing through a pile, the time for which this current passes, and the amount of chemical species that react. Why? We know that we say this fact, I think, in the second lesson that we did. And in second lesson, I told you when I presented the subatomic particles of interest of a chemist that the electron has a mass that can be neglected with regard to the mass of uh, neutron and the mass of protons, but it, is, it has a negative charge, and this negative charge is equal to 1.6 per 10 at minus 19 Coulomb. This is the charge of an electron. And I also told you that all negative, all charge are considered multiple according to a whole number of this, of this small electrical charge. Well, when a mole of electron passes through an electrical circuit, a mole of electron brings with itself the charge of one electron has the charge of 1.60 per 10 at minus 19 coulomb. But one mole of electron is formed by an Avogadro number of electron, namely by 6.021 per 10 at 23 electron. And the product of this quantity makes about 96.0. 500 Coulomb. This electrical charge is called the electrical charge of one Faraday and is pointed with F. Faraday was a scientist who studied a lot this kind of, of phenomena. And uh, this electrical charge may uh, make sure that uh, one mole of omnivalent ion reacts, or half mole of divalent ion reacts, or one third of trivalent mole of ion react. Namely, there are very precise relations between the intensity of a current that goes through a pile the time for which this current goes through, and the amount of matter of chemical reagent that occurs. Why? Look, the intensity of a current is defined as the amount of electrical charge Q divided by the time over which it passes. Namely, the intensity, the unity that measures the intensity of an electrical current are ampere, and ampere are coulomb per second. So, for, uh, for an amount of electrical charge Q to pass in an electrical circuit, you may have infinite combination of time and intensity current, because the 
quantity of electrical charge passing to a electrical circuit is equal to the product of the intensity of the current by multiplied by the time over which it passes. So there are very precise relationship between the amount of reactant that reacts in a pile and the intensity of the electrical current which is released by the pile and the time for which this electrical current may be released. These uh, considerations are summarized in the Faraday law. Namely, the Faraday law says just that a Faraday of electrical charge is able to react one mole of univalent ion, alpha mole of divalent ion, one third of mole of trivalent ion, and so on. Well, now we arrived at a point in which We saw the, how the nature of the reacting of the reacting system affects the electro driving force of a pile. But we saw in the last lesson that wait for a moment. The electrodriving force released by a pile, it depends also on the nature of the reactant system, but also on the concentration of the reagent present in solution, on the temperature, and on the partial pressure of gaseous reagent. Now, we have just so exhaustively how the nature of the reactant system, of the reacting system, affects the affects the uh, difference of potential the electro driving force released by a pile now we have the possibility of seeing also how concentration of reactants a product of reaction how temperature and how partial pressure of possible gaseous reaction affect the affect the electro driving force released by a pile. Wait for a moment. Well, all these uh, uh, way of affecting this electro driving force are summarized in this law which is called the Nernst equation. You know, the Nernst equation may be demonstrated in chemical thermodynamics. And uh, the demonstration of the Nernst equation goes beyond the scope, goes beyond the goal of this course, so that it will not be done. But it can be demonstrated. Nernst equations say that delta E is equal to delta E zero minus RT divided by NF multiplied by natural logarithm of Q. Now I'm going just to tell you the meaning of these various symbols that appear in this in this equation. Delta E zero, you already know the meaning of this symbol. It is a standard electro driving force released by the pile in standard condition. So if we are considering the pile in which a plate of zinc is dipped into a zinc ion solution 
and the plate of copper is dipped into a copper ion solution and you close the electrical circuit by a metallic wire and by a salt bridge, you have that the standard electrodriving force of this pile, delta E0, will be equal to 1.10. Namely, it will be the electrodriving force that is calculated by using the standard potential reported in the electrochemical series. Then, delta E is said the actual electrodriving force in condition older than standard. What does it mean? It means that at every moment that a pile is working and is releasing an electrical current that may be used to fulfill some of your particular goal, you have that this electrodriving force changes instant by instant. In the next lesson, we will see why. Okay? So, the electrodriving force in, re in the actual condition, namely the actual electrodriving force, will be equal to the standard electrodriving force minus this expression. What these various symbol that appears in this expression mean? R is the universal constant of ideal gas. You know, in the previous uh, study that we make, we used the value of 0.082 liter per atmosphere divided by Celsius degree. But in this kind of operation, uh, the value of R expressed as joule per, grad, per Kelvin degree must be used. And the value of R expressed in joule per Kelvin degree is 8.31 joule per, per Kelvin degree. T is the absolute temperature. Namely, if we are operating this standard condition, the standard condition means that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So, 25 degrees Celsius expressed in terms of degree Kelvin, it will be 298 degree Kelvin point 16. So, by putting in, at this site, instead of T, whatever value of temperature expressed in degree Kelvin, in Kelvin degree, you will be able to calculate the proper actual electrodriving force. Then N is the number of electron which is involved in this chemical reaction, this oxidation and reduction reaction. As an example, in the reaction of oxidation of metallic zinc to zinc ion, and in the reduction of reduction of copper ion to metallic copper, two will be the electron involved in this direction, in this reaction. So, N in this case will be two. Half is the electrical charge of the Faraday, namely nine, about 95, 500 Coulomb, and Ln is the natural logarithm uh, of Q. Natural logarithm means that that is the logarithm in the base E, and Q is the expression of the mass action law of the reaction that they are considering. For an example, for the reaction that we have just seen, 
namely the reaction which involves the oxidation of zinc to zinc ion and the reduction of copper ion to metallic copper, we have that. The overall reaction is this one, Zn metallic solid plus copper plus two aqueous that gives us zinc plus two aqueous and metallic solid copper from the mass action law. We have that the concentration of metallic zinc and the concentration of metallic copper disappear as they are a constant. So the expression of the mass action law will be concentration of zinc divided by the concentration of copper. So by substituting all this value in this in the Nernst equation, we will be able to calculate the standard, the, the actual electrode driving force on a pile in conditions that are different, that are all than the standard condition. Now I would like to stop here the lesson because we uh, the lesson have been lasting about two hours and uh, last, last, next lesson I will begin again the next lesson starting from the Nernst equation. Okay, goodbye, see you next lesson.